And uh, deputies, this is uh, Mylesha. This is actually the 1030, not the 1020. This is a uh, citation, actually it's three citations. They were issued on March 25th of this year on US 131. They're in Wayland Township, Elegant County. Uh, first one is for uh, speeding on an actual 90 and a 70. It was written as a 16 to 20 over. Second citation is a uh, violation of uh, seatbelt law. And the third citation is violation of child restraint law. So, Ms. Coulter, you are here on these three citations to do one of three things. First is you could admit responsibility to a citation or two, you know what? I see Tiara here. I'm just going to let her in. I'm assuming we will just get these done at the same time. Uh, And, and you know what, I'll just wait uh, for Tierra's uh, audio to kick in. Her audio's, there it is. Tierra Coulter, if you could take yourself off mute so that I'd be able to hear you. There you go. All right, and I'll read Tierra's into the record as well. Ms. Tierra Coulter, you have a citation here. It was issued on March 25th of this year on US 131 there at Wayland Township for speeding on a natural 90 and a 70. It was written as a 16 to 20 over. So uh, ladies, Ms. Coulter and Ms. Coulter, here are your options on your citations. First is you could admit responsibility to a citation or two, Admit a responsibility, but you'd like to provide some sort of explanation as to how or why this happened. Or three, you wish to contest the citation. In other words, to fight a ticket at what we call informal hearing. I'll ask you one at a time. Tierra, on your speeding citation, what do you wish to do? Um, You said to fight it. Yes. Okay. Yep. And then Miss. Malisha, you have three different citations. What do you wish to do on your citations? Um, I'm, I want to fight mine because I actually was not the vehicle that was pulled over. He okay. actually pulled Pierre over. Ma'am, do you wish to fight all three citations? Yes. All right. Then it makes a lot more sense for me to start with the officers. They have the burden to establish to me why you were issued citations. Uh, and, but after that, you'll have the opportunity to either ask questions or testify on your own behalf. And so deputies, I'm not sure who is going to be uh, testifying. Let's start with uh, Tierra Coulter. Uh, but if you want to just pick up the narrative somewhere where it makes sense, explain the issuing of the citations. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, both of these are kind of all the same incident all put together. So if it's okay with you. It's going to be just one big. Uh, testimony that, that's kind of why I just let everybody in. I assumed looking at the dates and times that this was all sort of the same incident. So go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. On March 25th, 2024, around 210 in the morning, I was running stationary radar on US 131 at the 67 mile marker. Um, my rear radar activated with solid tone number. Um, two vehicles or a vehicle approaching at 90 miles per hour and the posted speed limit is 70 miles per hour. Observing in my rear view window, I witnessed two vehicles, two sets of headlights traveling next to each other at that rate we of speed. We were not traveling next to each other. Ma'am, ma'am, if you speak again, I'm going to put you in the waiting room and handle your case separately. This is not your turn. It's the deputy's turn. And like I said, when the deputy is finished, you'll be able to either ask questions or testify on your own behalf. Is that clear? Tierra, is that clear? Okay, uh, because this is audio recorded, I'm assuming you giving the okay symbol means it is clear. All right, Deputy, you want to pick it up? Yes, sir. After Isn't she special? 90 miles an hour, two o'clock in the morning, uh, don't, don't, with the kids in the car, apparently not restrained properly. And, and she shows up with attitude. Both vehicles passed my stationary location. I switched my radar to my front uh, radar cone, where I picked up the vehicles continuing still 90 and a 70. Both vehicles were front and back to each other, keeping pace with one another. Um, I then pulled out behind the vehicles and began to follow them. I switched my radar to um, moving radar. The same speed continued. I also paced them. 
Uh, we followed them up to the 62 mile marker uh, due to the fact of them weaving between the lanes, not using blinkers, traveling at a high rate of speed. We called for a second unit uh, unit prior to initiating the traffic stop just due to the behavior of the vehicles and the time of day at, at this time. Um, after initiating the traffic stop, both vehicles yielded to the right side of the road. Um, I'm sorry, while pacing them, they fluctuated speed between 85 and 90 miles per hour during that pacing period as well. Um, while they were going between the lanes, there were no cars in front of them that the uh, radar could have picked up either. Um, after we initiated the uh, traffic stop, both vehicles yielded to the right side of the road. Uh, the first car directly in front of me was Miss Tierra's vehicle. It was a silver um, escape. And then the second vehicle in front of her was Miss uh, Malisha's vehicle, which was a um, Explorer. Um, Deputy Danville made contact with Miss uh, Tierra while I made contact with Miss Mal Mal Malisha. I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. Um, oh, you're fine. Thank you. Um, so <laughs> as I was speaking with Miss Malisha about um, the reason for the stop and the vehicle, after uh, Deputy Danville finished his contact with Miss Tierra, uh, he approached on the passenger side of Miss Malisha's vehicle, where then he observed uh, two children in the vehicle, uh, one infant being held in someone's arms unrestrained, and then a second uh, juvenile about toddler age that was in a booster seat without a seat belt. Um, then I returned to the vehicle. I ran the information of uh, both the drivers and the vehicles, issued my citations and while providing the paperwork to Ms. Malisha. Uh, occupants of the vehicle became confrontational and aggressive, began shouting over our instructions. And after they received the paperwork, they left without restraining the uh, children in proper car seats. Um, just to note, the car seat for the juvenile, uh, for the infant was in the trunk of the vehicle and the entire um, first vehicle was full. However, there was only a driver in the second vehicle to the rear, so they could have made room for uh, the infant in another vehicle or another occupant. And that's it, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, and then I think it would make more sense here for uh, Deputy Danville to just pick up your narrative, and then I'll give the Coulters an opportunity to respond. Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> I'll sit in the passenger seat of Deputy Kaminsky's patrol vehicle while he was running stationary radar at that six, seven mile marker median. Um, I was reading some notes in my lap when I heard an audio, a loud audio, clear, consistent tone of the rear radar of a, high, a vehicle coming at a high rate of speed. That's when I looked in the passenger side uh, uh, rear mirror and saw one set of headlights coming at us. But as the vehicles went past us, it was two vehicles both in the left lane, and then both vehicles are extremely close to each other. Uh, when Deputy Kaminsky switched to front radar, there was still that same clear, consistent tone of 90 miles per hour coming up on the on the, on the the radar screen. That's when Deputy Kaminsky got behind the vehicle. I observed both vehicles weaving in between the left lane and the right lane, right lane not fully committing to the right lane, but staying more to the left lane. <clears throat> and then eventually the Silver Escape had moved over <clears throat> and that's when I was able to get the plate for the Ford Explorer, giving that to dispatch while we were still behind the vehicles. I observed the Silver Escape not to have a plate, but ended up having a temporary uh, plate in the back of the window. Vehicles ended up <clears throat> both moving to the right lane. We called for a second car, and that's why we waited to initiate the traffic stop closer to the 67 mile marker. So that way we could have a tribal police officer who was sitting at the at the 129th overpass uh, to assist us with this traffic stop because we weren't sure if this was a road rage incident or what exactly was all going on based off of their driving and um, and what was going on while they're driving. Yeah, I, I have, this is the first time I'm seeing this, but it, it sounds like there's there's something deeper than than just erratic driving here. There's some drama either, either from the road or from from something else. Because that's the only thing that explains this this sort of erratic behavior. Two o'clock in the morning with kids and you're driving close to each other, nine, 90 miles an hour. That's just weird. On the road with them being so close like that. When we initiate our emergency overhead lights for that traffic stop, both vehicles had pulled over. I had made contact with uh, Tierra Coulter and Deputy Kaminsky had made contact with uh, Miss Malaysia Coulter. Uh, Miss Malaysia had exited her vehicle and uh, Deputy Kaminsky had told her to go back to the vehicle. Um, I made call contact with Miss Tierra. She refused to give me her driver's license. She did hand me some paperwork for the vehicle. She said that she had just purchased it and everything would be in there and I could find her by running the vehicle. I did end up finding her in lean by running the vehicle 
and could confirm her identity based off of her endless photograph as her being the driver of that vehicle. After I was done making contact with Tierra Coulter, I had walked up to the passenger side of Malaysia Coulter's Explorer. That's when I observed in the passenger rear compartment of that Explorer, there was four individuals in that back spot. There was a small child that was seat belted behind the driver's seat. There was a very young child between three to four years old in a booster seat that was asleep that did not have a seat belt on. And then there was a young adult sitting in the passenger rear seat behind the passenger seat that was holding on to a very small young toddler. And she actually had a diaper bag covering up that child. So I couldn't see her initially. And then in the rear compartment of that Explorer was a child seat that would be proper for that toddler, but it was not secured in the vehicle. And it was like upside down in that rear hatch. I had asked Miss Malaysia Coulter to secure that infant. And she stated that she wasn't going to, and that the child was not secure because it was teething. Okay. Uh, so we'll start with you, Tierra. You just have the one citation. Uh, 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 what do you wish to tell me? Here we go. Um, well, first off, um, I did not refuse to give my ID. I actually told them I did not have it on me and I was waiting for it to come in the mail. Um, so I did not have it on me. Um, I just had my temporary paper, which wouldn't show a picture of me, so it wouldn't matter. Um, and then also um, with the thing, we were not on the side of each other. We were actually following behind each other. So I was, she was in the front of me. I was in the back of her. Um, and that's all I have to say. Okay. N nothing as to your speeding citation. Oh, um, what am I supposed to say about it? Uh, well, ma'am, you said you wish to fight that ticket. You heard the testimony right. against you. Do you wish to have any testimony for you of why I shouldn't find you responsible on the speeding citation? Oh, um, I mean, I don't know what else I can say other than I know I don't believe I was going no 90 miles up in no 70. I even when they came to my car. Oh, sweet Jesus. That's what she comes up with after the judge helps her. I mean, this happens every day. I'm not knocking him for it, but the, the, the judge actually nudges her. Hey, they've made the case. You haven't said anything <laughs> to oppose that. You might want to at this point. And she comes up with, I don't think. Okay. I told them that. Me and my sister was on this. They said that we were following and weaving in and out. My sister was in front of me the whole time. How are we weaving in and out if she's in the front of me? Ma'am, do and you have a to my car. They came to my car aggressive. They came to my car aggressive. I did not come to, they didn't, I didn't be aggressive back to them. I just told them that they were being a dickhead. Okay. So, ma'am, you don't know how fast you're going. That's your testimony. I'm, I didn't, I did not know at the moment that if I was going over, I did not intentionally go over. No, I did not know. Okay. That. And then, Miss uh, Malaysia, I. Uh, another delicate flower. She, she <laughs> who's not aware that maybe, maybe the way she addressed the officers could be seen as aggressive. I would uh, switch over to you. Any testimony that you wish to give as to any one of the three of your citations? Yeah. So for, as far as the speeding goes, um, you know, nor vehicles that the speed is just automatically just fast. I don't believe that I was going over 90. Um, also, I wasn't the car that they pulled over. Only reason why I pulled over is because my sister, she, she, she's still nervous driving on the highway. So I wasn't speeding because she don't even go fast on the highway. And exactly. we weren't weaving in and out. She was behind me, trailing me because she doesn't drive on the highway. As far as my infant daughter goes, she was teething and we had just took her out of the car seat. As far as the one uh, that was in the middle, he said that she was sleeping. She was not sleeping. She was up and she was whining, crying because they're terrified of the police. So I could see her taking off her uh, seat, though. Um, as far as the other Tyler go that was in the seat, um, his um, he was properly in his seat. So I don't understand why I even received the citation for uh for for them, um, but yes, I definitely am willing to uh, to fight all three citations because I don't feel like I I know for sure that we weren't going ninety. I mean, I, and I would okay, I would I guess I would, going, I would assume I guess I would assume responsibility for my toddler not being 
in her uh in her seatbelt because she was teething and my daughter has kidney problems and all type of stuff so she's a very whiny baby uh so i will assume responsibility for that um but as far as the seatbelt on the other toddler no she took her seatbelt off because she was scared because they were very aggressive when they came to the car the one that was on my passenger side he was talking to uh my 13 year old daughter and like he was just being real rude nobody was even being rude to him he was just like she said being a dickhead um yeah very rude the guy that was on my passenger i mean on my driver's side very pleasant he was very nice um i wasn't even i was actually kind of like puzzled because i didn't understand why they were walking to my vehicle and i got out of the vehicle um because they pulled my sister over and I wanted to see what was going on, you know, so it wasn't like I was getting out the vehicle to be confrontational or anything in that nature. Okay. So you admitted one of the citations. The the other one, you said you don't think you were going 90. Well, at best, the, the speed limit might be 70, maybe 75 in Michigan. I'm not sure. 131 is a highway. So it could be as high as 70 or 75, but if you're going 80, you're over. And you said you don't think you're going 90 as opposed to a police officer with radar saying you were good luck with that. All right. So, and I don't mean this for Tierra, for Tierra. Um, all you have is a speeding citation. I find it's pretty clear here. I would find you responsible. You did not give an alternate speed. You did not know how fast you're going. The officer's testimony, two of them is not only were you hit with stationary radar, but you were hit with moving radar and you were paced all at the uh, uh, speed that they've identified. So, um, I mean, that's sort of as clear as it gets. Uh, as to you, uh, uh, Ms. Malaysia Cor Coulter, I wouldn't have left you let you leave the scene. Uh, exactly. You can't... No, ma'am. I would have charged you with reckless driving, and I would not have let you leave the scene with a baby in someone's arms when there was a car seat in the trunk. Uh, you cannot drive around like that. You are clearly in reason, violation see, listen, of these laws. Listen. So the reason why was one that she was teething, and then my daughter was getting ready to change her diaper. I'm driving. I can't okay. change a poop diaper if I'm operating. It doesn't matter the reason. You can't drive down the road, especially at speed like that. The reason I... why there's laws for car seats, and especially for infant, infants, let alone toddlers, is if you get into a car wreck, they have very little chance of surviving that car wreck if they're not in a car seat. Sir, That's why I it's wasn't a law. even going fast. I wasn't going well, fast. Like yes, I you said, were, man. It, You're it, going nine it, into it, 70. So listen to so me. Do you have a newer the time, vehicle? The time for arguing is over. I would find no, you responsible on all three of your citations. Now, ladies, you, you both have a right, because you had a contested hearing, to say, I don't agree with what just happened there. I wish to go to formal hearing. Formal yep. hearing is in front of the district court judge with the prosecutor. But to go to formal hearing, you must do two things. One is you must ask for that within seven days of today's date. That window of opportunity for you to contest this finding further closes after seven days. And two, you must come in and ask for that in writing because you will have to post a bond in the same cash amount as the fines on the tickets. And so I'll ask you one at a time. Do you understand your rights on appeal? Tierra? No, I don't. Okay. And Malaysia? No, I don't. All right. So I, I said two things. One is ask for the formal hearing within seven days of today's date. Tiara, do you understand what those words mean? Please don't insult my intelligence. I heard what you well, said. Okay, but I have to break it down further because you said you don't understand. Right, you understand? because you're, you're talking fast, so I need you to slow okay. down a little bit because this is my first you time found going to court. Do you understand? And that's Ms. Coulter, or Tierra, I'll start with you. That's why I'm saying we will go through it again. There's two things you would have to right, do. Right, but you asked me an insulting question is what I'm telling you. Please don't insult my intelligence when you're asking me. Just just ask me if I understand. That's it. All right. Not those well, words. Well, I did, and, man, and you said you did not understand. So I'll ask you, right. Tierra Coulter. Two things. First is that you must take action within seven days of today's date. Do you understand that part? Yeah, I heard you. All right. The second thing is you must come in and ask for the formal hearing in writing because you will have to post a bond, a cash bond, 
in the same amount as the fines. Do you understand if, what I mean by that? Um, no, I have a question. If I live in okay. Kalamazoo and this is in Allegan, how do I come in in person? Can I get it in like a uh, email or something? No, ma'am. You would actually have to come in to the Allegan County Courthouse with the same amount of money that the fines and cost is on this citation. And well, it doesn't will... tell me no cost on it on my ticket. Okay, and that's why I said I'll explain it. You would have to come in with $130 and post that as a bond to guarantee your appearance at the formal hearing. So the two things you must do is within a week, you have to come in here with $130, leave that with the And court what if I can't do that bond. within a week? What's that? I say, and what if I can't do the money within a week? Then you cannot have a formal hearing. You are stuck with my finding here today. Oh, well, and then Ms. Ms. Malaysia, you would have to do that for each one of the three tickets that you would wish to contest further at formal hearing. Do you now understand? Listen, I, I am a single mother. I'm a single mother. I work 12 hour shifts. I'm not going to be able to come in within a week. I'll pay my costs, but um, okay. I definitely, I will be taking this matter to our Kalamazoo news because I don't feel like we were speeding. We were not speeding at all. How we speeding and she trailing behind me? That don't even make sense. I will admit to my baby being held. Yeah, okay. If you guys okay. want to, and then we were that, not even that's going fine. to the same place. I will reiterate for you: each, neither of you provided a speed you thought you were going. You just both said you weren't going. You didn't think you were I, going ninety. I understand. Can I say something? Can I say something? But we something are else? all set. No, ma'am. We are all set for what we well, need to do. Well, he said, he said, he said that I could have put parties. somebody in my right. car, but at the end of the day, I couldn't put nobody in my car because we're we set. were not going Goodbye. to the same place. <laughs> Thank you, officer. What's this, Joe? What is Well, there you have it. That was fantastic. That was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, really, Child Protective Services should be uh, should be looking into both of them. They, given given the facts of that scenario, uh, it's it's questionable if they're fit to be parents. And I, I do like this. We're gonna go to the Kalamazoo, uh, <laughs> to the vaunted Kalamazoo Press. <laughs> Don't worry, ladies. You're already on Law Talk with Mike. I, I, trust me, a lot more people will see that than the Kalamazoo Press. <laughs> Fun fact: I was born in Kalamazoo. I know what I'm talking about. All right. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate it.